Now, this week's Art Talk then is also focused on the sporting life, that of artist Thomas Eakins and of our very own talented BD team. Now, Sarah, let's go ahead and run with the ball, dip the oar and swim with the sharks. <laughs> Good morning. Yes, yeah, so we will be talking first about Thomas Eakins, who was an American realist painter, and then our BD All-Star team. So here we go. So Thomas Eakins um, is considered one of America's greatest realists. He dedicated his career to representing the human figure in oil, watercolor, sculpture, and photography. His style renounced these idealized romantic depictions and advocated instead for a meticulous investigation of the human form and the natural world. Eakins was born in Philadelphia in 1844. He was enrolled at the Pennsylvania Academy of the Fine Arts from 1862 to 66, but he also attended anatomy lectures at Jefferson Medical College and profited from contact with Philadelphia's art collections, exhibits, and artists. Arriving in Paris for study in 1866, uh, Eakins was in the vanguard of young painters who would shift the focus of American art from landscape to the figural subjects favored by the European academies. He studied uh, for almost three years in France, principally at the Ecole des Beaux-Arts, a school that we're very familiar with this, at this point. We've had many artists who have studied there. And he studied under Jean-Léon Jérôme and briefly with the portraitist Léon Bonat. And he also spent a winter working in Spain before returning home. So returning to Philadelphia from Europe in 1870, Eakins began a series of representation of the sport of sculling, a subject for which he's uniquely identified. The Champion of Single Skulls is the first significant work in that series of paintings and watercolors. And it's believed to commemorate the victory of Max Schmidt, a friend of the artist and skilled amateur rower uh, in an important race on the Schuylkill River in October 1870. Also an avid rower, Eakins depicted himself pulling the oars of a skull in the middle distance. So this kind of shows the artist's quirky sense of humor. Instead of inscribing his signature in the painting's corner, he actually subtly included his name and the date on the boat that he's shown rowing in the distance. This is him right here. So he set up studio at his childhood home where he lived for the rest of his life. And he painted relatives and friends, predominantly women engaged in everyday activities in domestic interiors but he was also really inspired by the outdoor sports that he had enjoyed since his youth, rowing, fishing, hunting, sailing, etc. So he embarked upon a series of oil paintings and watercolors of male athletes at identifiable locations in the Philadelphia area. The Biglin Brothers Racing is part of that series of about 14 works depicting rowing. So this detailed watercolor is Eakins' only major work devoted to baseball. Eakins was eager to find modern American sub subjects that could enlarge the tradition of historical figure painting. So sculling, sailing, swimming, and boxing offered him the opportunity to showcase these superbly defined bodies. In 1875, he wrote a, a letter to artist Everett Shin. And he, uh, uh, Eakins pointed out that the ball players were, quote, very fine in their build and that the scene would admit of fine figure painting. So this painting of Philadelphia athletics players, Wes Fissler and John Clapp, was built of tiny brushstrokes of wash applied in many thin layers. Uh, Eakins, who was really interested in photography as well, probably used his camera to capture this scene and then worked up the image later in his studio. Eakins's boxing and wrestling pictures are as revolutionary in their subject matter as his earlier rowing scenes. Uh, this, the paintings, they don't uh, depict a specific bout. Uh, he combined details from several fights to give it this kind of realness and worked really diligently to capture the atmospheric effects of the dust and smoke in the arena. And although few critics actively promoted his vision, uh, the accurate portrayal of the human figure here really won him a position in the art world. So now we have our very own SMA sports all-stars, starting with Peter Sherman. As a man with many talents, some may say he has a strong connection with sports. Seen in these images, 
or some, depicts Peter with his crew team. Elliptic Go, Go, Go showcases his great endurance. And Don't Worry, Be Happy has Peter dressed and ready for a jump on his pogo stick. Next, we have Greg Ward, our golf extraordinaire. Legend has it he's never shot over 18. Seen in Unforgettable with a furry companion, Greg is ready to tee up and have a good time. Maybe we'll see him at the Masters next year. Next, our very own Darren Durkee rides bikes, but not just any bikes, supercharged electric bikes. In his portrait titled Wheelie Good Time, Darren and his e-bike are pictured with the beautiful sights of Washington, D.C. in the background. And I heard he can make it anywhere in the country on that bike in just 30 minutes. And now we have Tom Hernandez with a throwback. Our baseball all-star is pictured with his team in All Swings Considered. Word on the street is that he has a batting average over 400. I wonder if he has his own trading cards. On to Chuck Goddard, our resident clay target and upland game bird hunting all-star. Chuck is seen here with his furry companion in Bullseye. And rumor has it that Hawkeye, a Marvel superhero with great shooting abilities, was based on Chuck. Patty Malhabor is a tennis all-star. She's a regular at the Wimbledon Tennis Championship and has allegedly gotten a Grand Slam, not to be confused with the breakfast platter from Denny's. Game, set, match. It's believed that she's managed to swim across the Pacific Ocean. Heather Kirkpatrick is our water polo and swimming all-star. She's given swimming tips to Michael Phelps, Katie Ledecky, and many more. Some think she may even have a set of gills. And finally, it could be a bird or it could be a plane, but no, it's Frank Flora, our skiing all-star. Here, he's pictured hitting the slopes in up to snow good, catching air in ski you later, and hanging out with some buddies in snow way. Maybe we can catch him at the next Winter Olympics. Thank you to the business development team for submitting your pictures, and I will see everyone next week.